Despite the positive, eliminate the negative, because that is what our teaching is all about. So our topic this morning, for the, for the whole year, we're doing 100 years of science of mind. That is the, the um, organization-wide uh, theme for 2018. So we will be honoring um, many of the writings of Ernest Holmes because that's the basis of our teaching. That's where we come from. And this month, as Back to Basics, we are um, dwelling on living the science of mind. And today's topic is using the science of mind. So what do you want for your life this year? What do you want more of or want to bring in or want less of? Or, or what if you had your perfect, satisfying life, what would it look like and what would it sound like and what would it feel like? And how would you go about creating this this absolutely satisfying, wonderful life? Well, we can find the answer to that in the title of today's message, which is Using the Science of Mind. We have an amazing teaching, and I guess it could more accurately be called Consciously Using the Science of Mind, because make no mistake, these principles, this, this principle of, of thinking our thoughts becoming things, um, that works in our lives whether we are aware of it or not. But we have the opportunity to use it consciously. And as we use it consciously, we make a difference in our individual lives, in our families, in our workplaces, and in the larger world. So the most important part about using the science of mind is using it. Using it, you know? Because we have, I mean, we talk about these things, and, and the, it, but it's not just about thinking about it. It's not just about having it in our head. It's about moving it down into our heart and applying it in our lives, these, these teachings that are so amazingly rich. Our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, said, Our movement will not depend on a talk <clears throat> as I'm giving you now. Our evolution, what it will mean to the world, will not depend on books we write. It will depend on what we do with it. Now, that was written many, many years ago, and it is just as true today. Our teaching is about what we're going to do with it. That's where the power it is. We live in a spiritual universe where everything is connected, I mean, we can call this thing God or spirit. We can call it whatever you want. Ernest Holmes called it the thing itself. The thing itself. And he said, <clears throat> the study of the science of mind is the study of first cause, spirit, mind, or the invisible essence, <clears throat> that ultimate stuff and intelligence from which everything comes, the power back of creation, the thing itself. And we are all made of that divine essence. And the nature of that divine essence is to evolve and to grow and to move into new forms. And it, it works by creating. Just as creation on, on a large scale came up with, resulted in, um, in the planets and the, and the stars and universes beyond our imagining, our thoughts are just as powerful in creating our own life. What we believe, what we think about, is absolutely what rules the activity of our life. And of course, this is true whether we know it or not. It's true whether we believe it or not. I'm reminded of a, a gentleman in a, in a class one time, and it was, we were working on affirmations, which are so, so powerful. The repeating of, of positive statements uh, that, that indicate to the universe what we want in our lives. So we're working on affirmations in the class, and this gentleman says, well, you know, I'll do these affirmations, but they're not going to work. <laughs> I mean, this can't work. 
Well, guess what, folks? It didn't work. <laughs> it absolutely worked by not working. And then there was somebody else in the class, uh, a young woman who had never heard of affirmations, and she was so excited to see how these affirmations were going to work in her life. And she came back the next week to class to report that, that her life had unfolded in some amazing ways, just as she had called forth in her affirmations. It seemed miraculous. It seemed magic. She knew they would work. And they did. It is absolutely done unto us as we believe. So one of the ways that we use the science of mind is with our thoughts. Norman Vincent Peale said, change your thoughts and you change your world. Catherine Mansfield, an early 20th century um, writer, said, could we change our attitude? We should not only see life differently, but life itself would come to be different. And as Eamon shared with us earlier, Ernest Holmes, of course, said, change your thinking, change your life. Say it with me. Change your thinking, change your life. Because we teach that there is something around us, in and around us, that automatically responds to our thoughts that automatically responds to what we claim and what we believe and then gives us an energetic match for that, an energetic match. You've heard me say it dozens of times, what we think about, we get more of. What we think about, we get more of. Ernest Holmes said, all thought is creative according to the nature, impulse, emotion, or conviction behind the thought. Thought creates a mold in the subjective in which the idea is accepted and poured and sets power in motion in accordance with the thought. Ignorance of this excuses no one from its effects, for we are dealing with law and not with whimsical fancy. It works. This power, this, this something, this, this law that automatically responds to our thoughts doesn't decide whether what we're calling in with our, with our thoughts um, is something we're going to like or not. And it, it doesn't even decide whether what we're calling in is something that will be good for us or not. It simply responds to what we have claimed with our thoughts and our beliefs. And I think most of us know that there are times that we use this in ways that, that are not necessarily positive. The universe only, only knows how to say yes to whatever it is we claim, whatever it is we claim. So if, if I wake up in the morning and, and say and feel and believe, oh, God, this is going to be a great day, filled with energy and aliveness, filled with joy and love, filled with adventure, filled with me getting everything done that I need to get done. If I wake up that way, the universe says, yes, <laughs> absolutely. And then I am given everything I need. And then, of course, the rest is up to me. Now, conversely, if I wake up in the morning planning on just another lousy day, the universe is, what's the universe going to say? Yes. <laughs> yes. And so I will step into um, situations and, and relationships that will prove to me that it's going to be just another lousy day. I like what um, the Reverend Dr. Margaret Stortz said in this month's Science of Mind magazine. If there are any of you who don't get this magazine, it is amazing. We've got copies out here. You can, you can always buy them here or you can subscribe. It is, it is absolutely amazing. She said, this philosophy is for the adventurous person who likes to think. There's no one to applaud or save you. We are responsible. We come to realize we are using the infinite mind each time we think, each time we think. And if we notice our thoughts starting to spiral down, we can notice it and shift it. 
I'm reminded of a conversation that went through my head recently. Um, I had my annual physical, and um, every, everything is very well, but, but the doctor wanted me to uh, get a flu shot. And, um, and I didn't want to this year. I mean, some years I do, and some years I don't. And, but then later I thought, oh my God, what if I get the flu because I didn't get the flu shot that the doctor suggested, you know? Negative thought, definitely. Definitely something that I didn't want to have manifest and don't want to have manifest in my life. So when I noticed myself going there, I said, okay, I'm not going there. And I remembered that my body, all of our bodies, are made from a pattern of perfection, divine perfection. I am healthy. I am energetic. I am ready for life. I'm not going to get the flu. I am totally resistant to anything like that. Totally resistant. All is well. So we use the the science of mind by intentionally choosing our thoughts, by letting go of the ones that don't serve us, and by absolutely choosing the ones that we do. And we use the science of mind by accentuating the positive, just as Karen sang about for us. We also use the science of mind, uh, in addition to with our thoughts, we use it with our thanks. We use it by saying thank you. Meister Eckert said, the only, if the only prayer you ever said in your whole life was thank you, it would suffice. And Ernest Holmes said, Gratitude is not only a virtue, but is also part of a practical philosophy of life, a practical philosophy of life, of daily life. There is no wiser way of living than to remember every morning what life has given us and to lift up our thought in thankfulness for every bounty we possess. And we possess a lot of bounty, a lot. So focusing on what we already have and being grateful for it nurtures within us an attitude of gratitude, the powerful attitude of gratitude. And since we're such powerful creators, that brings more of all kinds of good into our lives, more of all kinds of good. When we contemplate our blessings, we get good that is in, um, if we're saying thank you, thank you, thank you for all the love in my life, we find that then even more abundance flows in. Even more opportunities flow in. So it's, gratitude is an amazing, amazing thing. In answer to the question, how should we pray, Dr. Holmes said, by giving thanks that we already have that thing that we pray for. By completely believing and never doubting. He also said the reason we can make our request known with thanksgiving is because we know from the beginning that we are to receive and therefore we cannot be help but be thankful. It is, I mean, it's like, why not go ahead and be thankful now? It's mine. I know it's mine. I am grateful. So as you pray, feel grateful that what you're praying for is already yours, already showing up in your life now. See it. Smell it. Sense it in whatever ways you can. Whatever ways make it real to you. Imagine that you already have it. Because that's the kind of universe we live in where everything has already been provided and it's just up to us to open up and receive it. We use the science of mind with our thoughts, we use it with our thanks, and we use it with our trust. Now, if you're like most of us, you've had some rough times in your life. You've had probably some health and financial challenges, possibly jobs that you really wanted and needed that you didn't get. Your heart may have been broken. But you know what? You moved through all of those things. You are here now and you're okay. You're breathing. Uh, Everybody 
Oh, good. Yeah. <sighs> You're healthy enough to get up and come to church this morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, we, we tend to, you know, forget in times when things are hard that this too shall pass. This too shall pass. And that is one of the ways that we use the science of mind by remembering that tomorrow is going to be a better day. Even if today is good, tomorrow is going to be an even better day. This too shall pass. We're living in crazy times with a lot of divisiveness. And this too shall pass. It seems that sometimes breakthroughs are often preceded by breakdowns. And as I look around, I see that there's a good possibility that the breakdown thing is what we're going through now in this world. <laughs> and that it will lead to a breakthrough, as we know that this too shall pass. I love the pearl of wisdom attributed to John Lennon. Everything works out in the end. If it hasn't worked out, it's not the end. <laughs> Everything works out in the end. If it hasn't worked out yet, it's not the end. Just wait. So we can trust spirit. We can trust our own soul's past. We can trust humanity's evolution. We can trust that spirit is right here, right now, always and everywhere. We can trust that there's a power for good in the universe greater than we are, as Ernest Holmes said, and we can use it. We can trust that there's that power in the universe greater than we are, and it will use us as we say yes, as we are willing, as we are open to be used. So we can remember, remember that power that is greater for, than, than we are. Call on it with our thoughts, with our thanks, with our absolute trust. And as we do that, we create lives that are filled with love and abundance, filled with success and satisfaction, filled with health, and happiness. So are you ready to use the science of mind with your thoughts and your thanks and your trust? Yes. Yes, yes great. Are you ready to use this power for good in your life? Yes. Yeah. Are you ready to do it every day to really use it? Yes. Okay, let's pray. As practitioners stand, we will uh, move into prayer. I am so grateful that there's a power in the universe greater than I am and that I can use it. I am so grateful for this teaching that reminds us that we don't have to just stumble through life. We can do it consciously. We can choose. We can step into the future that we want to step into, knowing that we are blessed and we are supported by the divine, by spirit supported by love, supported by joy. And so what I know is that as each of us goes into our week, that we remember this, we use it. We watch our thoughts. In fact, I declare that in each of our paths, there is something that makes it even easier than usual to watch our thoughts. We're reminded in clear and tangible and joyful ways that anything that does not serve us we can choose a higher path choose a higher thought choose a new idea and so I claim that that is what happens for each of us and we go through this week with our lives filled with love filled with abundance saying thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you and I say thank you that there is this law, this thing 
the something around us that reacts to our gratitude, that reacts to our claiming of the highest and best for us. And so in gratitude, I let it go. I let it be. And so it is.